to your paradise with a little man pays a bigger price take another hit just get it over with we're a little sick you see can't stay down on all we gotta make it known so get back up you're not alone and then hit him back leave and grip him to the floor you never had a choice they're knocking at your door remember my friend it's time in this is what keeping well and um, so today um, we are going to be answering some of your questions so for the last few days myself and Connor have been putting up a question box and we just wanted you to ask us some questions fitness related life related business related and we're just going to get right into it mm. so um, I'm going to just start with the first one we just we had quite a high volume um, some questions were quite similar so we just picked a few and we will just yeah okay so i'm just going to ask you this question okay so this is the first question do you and connor ever argue um so the answer is, <laughs> simple answer is yes and um, just to be really small things kate, kate can get, get quite irritated with things like my eating my breathing and <laughs> um, so yeah she like doesn't like loud eating she doesn't like loud breathing and so but like it's not like just regular like he actually chews no like, i'm actually so, so loud i've like so practiced loud. for years and i know it was so so quiet because of her but it's still like not <laughs> it's extreme and then alexa has to go on because <laughs> she can't be she can't be in a quiet room so we'll sit down she might be on a laptop working uh, and i'm there with my food one bite one crunch <laughs> and she'll be like alexa play something <laughs> So okay. That, and then right. I'm like, oh my god, you're so annoying, just leave me, eat my food. Um so yeah, that's probably what we argue about. That's um, it really. But honestly, I have to I have to back myself up here. If you haven't lived with a bodybuilder in the off season, the breathing is like someone's about to die. Like literally, it's like intense. It's like <laughs> and I'm like, God, are you okay? And he's just sitting there. So like that's just bear with me on this one. And also the food, because he can't hear himself, he's so into it. So it's just been intense and I know and I Connor, I know I definitely do with my cleaning. Like I have a small obsession with cleaning, but Connor tends to get in the way of that. So I do like to just have like a Saturday evening on my own or Saturday morning on my own, just chilling and then Connor just kind of gets in the way. So that's yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, apart from that. Yeah, we don't really argue about anything really else. Yeah, just a bit the major things with eating and breathing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's literally it. So um probably the only things that we have argued. Connor always said if we ever break up that it'll be probably because yeah I always <laughs> say that I said if I ever leave you it's going to be because how, how annoying you are and <laughs> giving it to me about food so yeah there you go okay so next question um, advice for a newbie uh, bikini competitor oh that is actually a really good question and I wish more people asked that question to be honest so um, I think kind of touching on the topic of knowing what you're doing first um, I think the most important thing is there's so much information out there now um, you can get caught up in negatives you can be caught up in positives but make sure f the first and foremost when you are researching shows that you get a coach I think that's probably the most important thing to do immediately so there's definitely non-negotiables in the sport and I think having a coach is certainly a non-negotiable like for me it's a must like I have a coach Connor has a coach any any top athlete in the industry has a coach you need to be looked after and guided and supported in the right way so kind of finding your feet yourself I wouldn't really advise you want to be put on the straight and narrow straight away of course and you want to know exactly what federation is suited to you you want to know the type of physique that you're bringing how long it's going to take you they'll set realistic expectations for you 
and I think that's really important because you can really fall off track very quick you can be looking at people who are five ten years ahead of you in the sport and you are trying to catch up with them and it kind of gets emotions flying well we tend to see that quite a lot so it's kind of getting yourself into a grounded mentality immediately with the coach I think that's definitely the most important advice that I could give as well as that I would also say once you have a coach once you've kind of discussed shows how long it's going to take you to develop your physique to get to the show that you would like to do potentially because there's many different shows as we know different federations require different looks and so taking your time and not rushing it is what I would advise and just enjoy the process because it's so fun isn't it mm. I think just like for us for both of us we are never in a rush like it wasn't like geez I need to be on stage tomorrow it was like let's get where we need to be in order to take the stage eventually so it was just us really loving our training really enjoying the way that we were starting to eat and just loving each day and I think that's really important try not to focus so much on the outcome and just focus on your process day to day because you will flourish um, a lot better focusing on that rather than getting so caught up in the mindset and trying to get somewhere where you're not ready to be yet so just it's stepping stones really um, as well as that I would say watch the federation go watch a show um, that you are potentially going to do so once you've decided with your coach go watch the show um, if not go watch some old videos from the show go look at the competitors who are potentially who are in your class go look at their physiques like what do what can you learn from their physique what do you what do they have that you don't what do you need to develop on I think those kind of things are the pretty pretty basic aren't they mm. and I think it's really important that more that more so than anything that you just really take your time so yeah, that's kind of mm -hmm. that's kind of my advice on that one. So yeah, just take your time and get someone to look after you immediately. Um, I would advise highly on that. So next question, um, how do you make your business more professional? Good question. So I actually think it's a really good question because I, I feel um, a lot of people will think kind of like the online space is very saturated um, and to agree it is, but in terms of actually people with really high professional standards, I don't think it is. So I think if you can kind of take your time and say, how can I be extremely professional, um, then it will kind of set you apart from um, other other people. So one big thing I think and um, that I kind of noticed that's just uh, sprung to my head is um, almost how you interact um, on on social media especially with your clients so what I would recommend for any um, individual and um, if you have an online business is to have some private group where you have your clients all put together and you can put messages in there and there's often times where I'd see people putting up on their Instagram story public for all their followers to see like a biz like something related to their, their clients like clients this X Y and Z is happening tomorrow um, or whatever it is and I don't think it looks really professional mm. um, so I think if you kind of had like um, a space where like okay and um, instead of putting up on your Instagram saying hey guys I just posted in our private group can everyone ha please have a look at it it's keeping it a lot more professional because mm -hmm. you have to think if you think about big businesses think about a big hotel or a big um, a big um, franchise company that um, you might think has high standards would they be writing on their on their like Instagram stories talking to their clientele about that their only going to be free for a few hours tomorrow and to like wait on replies for the next set like they wouldn't and um, so i think kind of setting high standards for yourself and kind of having an appropriate place to be talking to your clients is really important and i also think how you portray yourself so you must remember that you're a walking advertisement mm. for your business at the end of the day so um people's perception of you and how you kind of hold yourself in like public is extremely important whether you're at the gym whether you're outside whether you're on a night out like you must remember that you are the ceo of your business so you must like carry yourself a pride all the time in my opinion to have that um authority and to have that crisp professional look i think it's extremely important for any individual um so how how you per, how you portray yourself is how you're perceived at the end of the day so if you want to be perceived as a professional um individual then the way that you carry yourself the way that you hold yourself online in person is extremely important so that's definitely something that i would say as well and efficiency mm. so efficiency is a big thing for me um i pride myself on time management i am slightly obsessed with it and uh, being efficient like i don't like people waiting i don't like waiting so i don't expect people to wait for me so client responses need to be prompt they like i don't like people waiting for a very long time and i think it's important that you 
make sure that they know that you are there and um, that it's not like they, they don't hear from you for hours on end and then like maybe the next day you might reply like I just personally think that that's not appropriate and um, I think it's really important that of course if there's a, an issue arise or anything like that that you let them know but I think just attention to detail making sure you're efficient that you're on the ball that you kind of set times for yourself every day for especially when you're working from home and you're working for yourself that you have that tailored day so you're getting up at 7 a.m or you're getting up at 8 a.m whatever time you prefer and you're working for specific times in in the day so you're setting out markers for yourself so that no one's waiting on you basically is a big thing that I would say so just professionalism time management efficiency the way that you portray yourself is really important so that's kind of my advice on that anyway mm, that's good yeah well, next question, um, it is, do you ever experience self-doubt and how do you deal with it? Oh, that is actually a really good question. So um, I definitely feel everyone experiences self-doubt. Like it's something that's a natural feeling. And I think anyone who says that they don't is definitely lying to you. So um, it even kind of, when we were just kind of discussing um, kind of how we grew as a business there earlier, I think a big thing for me was I had a really good permanent job that I didn't actually really enjoy but I was stuck in my ways there because it took me so long to get to where I wanted to be and it was permanent and you kind of get so set and um, when it was time to leave and take the leap to take coaching on full time of course self-doubt started creeping in like am I going to be good enough and of course like after a few weeks um, of doing what I uh, taking that leap um, I honestly wish I did it sooner it's the best thing I've ever done for myself and I think just understanding that self-doubt is almost like a feeling of it's a scary feeling because it's a it's a stepping stone to push you in the right direction more so more often than not really and I think it's just that fear of change and you kind of you're in kind of an area of complacency and you're quite happy in your little bubble and when you kind of step outside of that bubble it can be quite fearful but it's a good fear and it should excite you because if it doesn't challenge you it's not going to change you so self-doubt is you almost challenging yourself in a way to kind of ultimately decide is this going to be like the best decision for me and more often than not it definitely is so I think just that's kind of my way of thinking yeah. whatever anytime I feel that now I always know it's a good feeling so yeah like the, how do you overcome it uh, which is the main part of the question like mm -hmm. I would say um thinking to yourself like just backing yourself and saying okay I'm really passionate about it um, I'm going to be very hard working at trying to like achieve uh, what is causing the self-doubt don't look at other people and say like geez like, I'd, I'd love to be like them I couldn't ever imagine being like them if you're truly truly passionate about it if you're willing to work really hard and um, then just back yourself and if you kind of have that belief in yourself then that will kind of overcome the self-doubt like it will, it will always creep in from time to time that's completely normal and uh, it's just kind of having uh, enough in you to back yourself and kind of ignore the self-doubt um, when it does creep in exactly so oh, next question um the different types of shows and federations and how do you tell where you'd fit in okay so uh, what we do with a client if they're like okay I want to compete and um, I'm not too sure about what federation to do I'm not sure um, what category to do at the end of the day me and Kate um, like we could chat amongst ourselves and we could have an idea on what we want them to do but uh, um, ultimately it comes down to the individual what do they want how do they want to look um, on stage so what we do is first of all say go look at the different federations and um, so watch a few shows um, online different um, videos of people on stage can you see yourself up there is that something you'd want to do and um, if the answer is no then that's obviously not the right federation for you if you're looking at it and be like oh my god those guys or girls are amazing i absolutely love it like then you're obviously seeing you're getting closer and um, to that federation so firstly looking at that um, and that will kind of give you a good insight then obviously communicating with your coach so saying okay this is the federation i'm considering this is the category i'm considering do you think it's realistic for me so it could be a case that the coach says excellent yeah i think you'd definitely be ready for this if we did a prep it could be a case that they'd say okay the category that you actually want to do i would say more two to three years so i recommend maybe we start in this category and then we'll eventually move up to that category and you'd be like okay i can kind of understand that i can see and um, that so um, as coaches from our standpoint where we look at what federations and would and categories would suit a client obviously first the physique and um, how do they look right now but as well what physique do they want to achieve some females some males they want to get as muscly as they can others want to stay um, smaller and don't want to actually add that much muscle and um, some individuals would like to get as lean as possibly can 
other people are like, okay, I do want to get lean, but I don't want to, um, they're, those girls may be a bit too lean for me or whatever it is. So finding and kind of understanding where they're at is definitely important because you don't want to push an individual to where they don't want to go because it's not going to work out too well. Um, secondly, um, personality. So personality is a big thing. So um, different personalities for different federations. They could have like for a fitness model show, for example, and um, they're very over the top on stage, really giving um, a lot of sass, a lot of personality. There could be a, a, a girl, let's say, who um, isn't like that. She's much more to herself and she wouldn't actually feel comfortable doing that on stage. Obviously, fitness model wouldn't be the way to go um, for that individual. And um, maybe more bodybuilding where there's more structure to the routines, etc. maybe more possible for them, or maybe more uh, realistic for them. Yeah, definitely. And I think with guys as well, a big thing is just time, like taking your time with the federations. And like Connor said, um, like st there's stepping stones to it. So if you eventually want to go into like, let's say open bodybuilding or a classic physique, but you're just not quite there yet, but you really want to get going and competing, mm -hmm. then maybe pushing more towards the like lighter side of men's physique first then developing into a really strong men's physique competitor over the years getting the, the mass that's needed and developing your physique over time you're still getting stage presence um, you're still getting stage time excuse me you're still getting the confidence on stage you're developing your physique um, in a in a very good a timely manner you're not like trying to push things too quick or get up on stage when you're not ready um, is one thing I would say so taking your time and like having those stepping stones as well especially for guys I think just make sure you're taking your time um, and again there's plenty of federations it's like Connor said it's suited to your personality so yeah yeah and um, so next question uh, what advice would you give to your younger self oh so I think I think for my younger self I definitely when I look back at back on it now I 100% I was a completely different person um, I think as a teen I was quite naive um, I did, always kind of wanted to follow the crowd and um, I think just to try and fit in and I wish like if I had the mentality that I had now I just tell myself stop like just do what you want to do like do what you love you don't need to be in a crowd to be like class as a cool like difference class do you know so like do you like if you're comfortable doing something different just because everyone else isn't isn't doing it like that doesn't mean that that's not normal like everyone's normal is different so it's okay to do something out of, like that you prefer to do just because others don't deem it as perfect then who cares so I think that's what I'd say to myself just basically back myself again and just do the things that I love so I wish I could kind of shake my younger self to be honest but I think I've learned every challenge that I faced every experience that I've had has made me who I am today so yes I'd like to shake myself but again I wouldn't change anything because I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have all those experiences but yeah don't follow the crowd and just do you really is what I'd say to myself so yeah would you say anything? Um, to be honest, I'd probably just say keep doing what you're doing. I, I was lucky enough in a way that I, I kind of knew quite young. Um, I, like, I was always um, into training and into the gym and really kind of about self-development and my own development. And I, um, I didn't mind if that kind of meant that I missed out on nights out and um, occasions and stuff. So I, I was very much focused from quite a young age on exactly what I wanted to do career-wise um, and kind of personally as well. Um, so for me, it was just kind of because I definitely had self doubt that cre creeped in and said, like, should you just be kind of going out um, all the time and just kind of having a laugh, or should you be doing what you're doing and trying to be dedicated? And probably what I'd say to myself is keep doing what you're doing. If you're on the right track, and um, this will kind of pay off for you, and the sacrifice will uh, will help you in the long run. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. One, <laughs> <laughs> um, so next question. So. Is running a business with your partner challenging? Ooh, um, good question. Um, to be honest, um, not really at all. Um, I think it isn't challenging if you kind of disassociate like the relationship side of things and the business side of things. And that's what we do really well. And um, so like during the day, it will be all kind of chat on the business and, and we'll just be kind of working. Like we, we, we're so passionate about accomplish and growing accomplish. That like it do, like it doesn't even seem like we're together because like we're working uh, and that's all that's happening um, and then in the evening you know it's time for our own time and stuff so I actually wouldn't see it as challenging I think it, it actually helps it quite a lot and um, because I think we we're like so passionate about the same thing we always have things to talk about I think let's say if 
I had the business by myself and Kay was doing something else and I was always talking about the business to her and she was like, do you know, like, will you ever shut up? Will you give me attention or whatever it is? I think that can nearly be more challenging. Um, so I think we're quite lucky in the way that um, we're both like doing it together and uh, we're both really passionate about it. Um, yeah, I find it quite, it's quite easy. Definitely, I think it, it helps that we like have very similar, like we have different personalities, but similar, if that even makes any sense, to be yeah. honest. Um, we're very similar from like a work ethic standpoint and where we want to be in, in terms of like our focus and drive. Um, like we're very different then like in terms of like our relationship, it's very much separated. So yeah. like when it's work, it's just work and we're fully focused on like what we have to do. And then we definitely can shut off in the evening, but I do think we have like a really good balance I'm very grateful for it because I know that it can be quite difficult mm. for a lot of people so I can definitely appreciate that but I am yeah, very I, grateful how we I work. think like people they're like geez so you live together you work together <laughs> you do, like and it does say, say like a lot but just the way we kind of operate things like it's, it's quite quite easy going mm, I definitely agree mm. so we don't kill each other no. we're actually we're actually quite normal just so. when, just when I eat just when he eats yeah okay <laughs> Next question, uh, do you, you ever feel imposter syndrome either now or at the beginning of your career? So I actually think when it comes to like that imposter syndrome, I think that's like initially like when you start off, of course, everyone feels like at the beginning, be like, oh my God, like this is like crazy. Like you're finally doing something that you want to do. Like people are coming to you for coaching and you're like, Jesus, is this real? Like every, every, every entrepreneur feels like that. Not even just as like a coach, but someone who sets up a clothing company, they're like, oh my God, people are like buying my clothes. This is amazing. But I think when you revert back and when you start to feel like that, it's, an, it's okay to feel like that at the beginning of your career, but you need to look back and say, right, how much how much value do I have in myself like how much money and time have I put into my education have I put into researching have I put into like putting all my systems in place to develop the service that I am providing to an individual mm -hmm. I think that that's really important when you start to see the value that you have in yourself I think things start to ease off and you realize geez like um anytime that we self-reflect like I look back at all our achievements I look back at our education I look back at where we've come and it's amazing to be able to review so so if you ever feel like you're having like imposter syndrome at the beginning, trust me, it's normal. Everyone feels like that. Mm. Every entrepreneur will say the exact same thing. Jesus, it's quite an intense and scary at the beginning. Of course it is. And it's natural for you to feel like that. But I think for us, yes, in the beginning, of course we did because it's a natural feeling. But what I would say to you is... Um, if you're a coach starting off or you're starting on a new business adventure and you have, have that feeling, I'd say look back on what I just mentioned and take pride in the value that you have in educating yourself and creating the service that you have today. So yeah, that's kind of my my advice on that one. I think you answered it well. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so how to motivate someone with a hundred reasons not to exercise? Yeah, so good question. Um, so for an individual who is a coach um, and the clients might be making excuses as to why not to exercise, that's the way I'm taking it up. Um, so what I would be saying there from a coaching perspective is really trying to find out um, the clients and the goals that they have um, and finding the emotional attachment to their goals. So um, if someone says to you they want to lose weight or they want to drop body fat, like that's not enough to really, really motivate them and make them discipline uh, for a long time in the future. So it's more bringing it back and saying, okay, why is it that you actually want to lose body fat? What will that do to your life? What can that, how can that improve your confidence? That improve confidence. How will that help you socially, professionally, uh, physically, like all these areas. And then they really start to reflect um, on kind of the different areas that um, it's going to help with them. And then they get that emotional attachment to their goal. And then they can say, okay, me exercising now, I see the benefits in it. I really can see how this can benefit my life. It's not just about losing body fat. It's about all the improvements it's going to make to all other areas of my life. So that's basically what I would say. I would say with your client, make sure they're finding short-term, long-term goals. If it's really meaningful to them, um, then they'll definitely um, do what's needed to be done. 100% and I think just mo motivation like comes like you're not always going to be motivated so when you create that emotional attachment to the goal once you start creating those consistent patterns and habits and the routine becomes like a habit then you they won't have a problem with exercising mm. so yeah
So that is the end of our Q&A. So hopefully you found it enjoyable. And um, if you do have any specific content you'd like to see over the next few weeks, then do please let us know. And you can drop a comment under the video and you can privately message us on Instagram. You can send us an email um, and we'll try to make that happen for you over the next few weeks. Absolutely. So thanks a million for watching guys and we'll see you next week.